Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Last week when I made the egg video, I promised to show you also the chuck that I'd made. Now I did not develop this myself, I copied it, but this is how I put it together. Start with a piece of a PVC coupling. It's in the plumbing department of your local hardware store. I got mine from Home Depot for about 10 bucks. Promptly put it into the lathe and cut it in half. Now, my half I have mounted into a threaded wood faceplate. In the initial diagram, he put it into his four jaw chuck. I don't want to have to change jaws. It's always at the, they always have the wrong set of jaws in my chuck. So I dedicated a threaded wood faceplate to this. It's glued in with a little CA glue. Then in use for at least this egg, I need a couple of spacers in the bottom. The chuck is just a little bit tall, but that's okay. And then I put a, another disc in that has a, the base uh, dished out for the bottom of the egg. So that goes there. And then the egg can go on. Of course, an unfinished egg still has the little nub on the top. And be sure to leave it there. It's, it does help. Then turn another disc to fit the top of the chuck. Now this one has a hole and is tapered to match the top of the egg. And then there's the cap of PVC, which once screwed down and the egg is aligned and cinched up good, enables you to finish the end of the egg to the same gloss and intensity and same finish and sanding as the rest of the egg. A lot easier, well worth the 10 bucks in a little bit of time. So let's make our chuck for eggs. I'm making this chuck from a design by Vern Bunn. However, in his example, he mounts his chuck to his chuck jaws in an expansion mode. I prefer not to occupy my chuck with stuff that I don't need to, so I'll mount my chuck to a threaded wood faceplate. I've made enough of these now that the process goes quickly. I start with some 8-4 poplar, round it off, in this case the faceplate is small enough that it can fit into my chuck with the jaws wide enough to drill and tap the hole. Then relieve around the hole to fit the spindle and chamfer the entrance threads. To strengthen the threads, I flooded them with thin CA glue, then let the glue set, then ran the tap through one more time. Next, I've mounted my plumbing fitting in a chuck with a tapered end in the tailstock. This gives me a chance to clean up the fitting before parting it into two pieces. Then clean up the end just a little bit. Then mount my new faceplate on the spindle and cut a groove to fit the PVC fitting into. To glue the PVC to the wood, I used medium CA glue and let it set overnight without accelerator. Now for the plywood disc that goes in the bottom of the chuck. I cut several blanks, then mounted two to a screw chuck, one for a spacer, one for a final. At this point, I'm fitting them to fit inside the PVC. Later, I'll dish out the middle to fit the egg's big end. I started with a parting tool, then switched to a bedan to reduce the diameter. Now for the top plywood disc. This one is a little larger to fit to the screw with threads on the PVC piece. Then I'm get cutting a very short tenon on one side, a 45 degree chamfer, then reduce the diameter to fit inside the threads of the PVC. I'll cut the center hole later after I remove the screw chuck. I'm making several for different egg sizes, but at this stage they're all the same.
Then I turned and finished an egg, leaving this small end with a short nub. Now with the squirrel chuck on the spindle, I'll cut a small hollow for the big end of the egg. I'm only shaping one disc. I'll save the others for different egg sizes. Does it have to be the big end? I think not, except that putting the big end will preserve more wood for the top disc. Now to cut a hole in the top disc. To protect my chuck jaws, I've put a 1 8 inch disc behind the blank in the chuck. The wood is mounted top into the chuck so that I can taper the hole to loosely match to the egg. I want as much of the egg to show through the egg chuck as possible. Other ranges of egg sizes will require a different size hole. To mount this egg, I put two of the bottom discs in the bottom of the PVC. I put some masking tape between the egg and the disc to provide a little protection against the rougher plywood. Next goes the egg to be finished, followed by the top disc and the top PVC ring. I'll use the nub left on the egg to help align the egg to the turning axis. The nub on this egg was a bit rough, so note to self, leave a smooth nub on the next egg. After tightening the first ring, I can trim off the nub, then sand and finish the small end of my egg. This chuck will handle eggs up to about two and a quarter inches in diameter. I'm already thinking of potential enhancements to this chuck. Smaller eggs will require different top plywood rings with a smaller tapered hole, a bottom plywood disc with a smaller hollow, and more or different spacer discs at the bottom of the chuck. This chuck does not require a band clamp with its risk of injury to my hands. The 2 inch PVC connector cost me about $10 at my local Home Depot store plumbing department. The 1 and a half inch connector was about $3 less but then maxes out with a smaller egg. So get the larger connector. I already have my beel tap for tapping the threads. The wood for the threaded portion is only about 8 square inches of poplar, but could have been scrap. The plywood was also from my scrap pile. I have one half of the PVC connector left over for something in the future. I don't know what yet, since the chuck I have will adapt to many different sized eggs. I'll be using this egg chuck for all solid eggs up to about 2 and a quarter inches diameter. Of course, an ostrich egg would require a different setup. I don't think they make these PVC connectors that big. I'll have to modify my donut chuck for an ostrich egg. Hmm, that could be interesting. That's all for this video. Please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Please always wear your full face shield. Goggles are simply not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.